Sup, sup, sup. My name is Eric for the Eric Council. It is 12.03 New York City time, AM. So I am filming this at midnight and spending the entire day editing and rendering it because the new computer is until next month. But, um, yeah, by the time we finish the four coffee times for the month, we'll be done. Um, I also want to touch upon one quick thing real quick is this. I know you guys want to see stock market. I know I want to do, I want to personally do, I don't know if you guys want to see it, is the top five, the top ten, two different series. Keep those going. And the subscriber showcase, I know you guys definitely want to see that and a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to get to all of it. You guys are going to have to be a little bit patient. There is a big reason why I'll explain it next month. Sorry to keep you out of the loop for an entire month. It's just how it has to be right now. Um, I hate doing that to you guys. And Oh my god, is it really the 15th of the month? Apparently, yeah, it's the it's the 13th of the month. Okay, so great. 13th of the month. Let's do this. Like I said, let's just go nuts. Alright, so this set has Dustin supports. It has Chromely support. I'm actually looking at this on my cellular device. Uh, Sylveon, uh, Sylveon, sorry, po too much Pokemon, is a new plant deck that basically mills, but there's a new word for it that will be covered in How to Play Yu-Gi-Oh! Edition 2, which is going to be the full 30-40 minute fledged video to get you basically playing Yu-Gi-Oh! if you're new to the game. Um, then we have some Ghost Tricks. Ghost Trick Frost, Ghost Trick Mary, Ghost Trick Cat Girl, Ghost Trick Skeleton, Ghost Trick Mummy. There is a TCG one, but we're going to touch upon that at the end of the video. Like, because we're doing this in order, I'm just like scrolling on the phone. Let me talk about Ghost Tricks real quick, because I think that's going to be the first thing I really want to address here. And then we'll talk about the Sylvan archetype. Ghost Tricks are finally going to get what they need. They're not going to be tier 1. There's too much too much going on with this game. With too, too many decks to even dare say they're going to be able to compete to that level. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm not calling them a bad deck. I love them. I play it. But it's like Medulce. It's going to slowly build up. And then maybe we'll see some kind of build just take over. And then that will create innovation between the builds. And it will just go nuts from there. Um... I know someone's going to ask if there's blue eye support in here. I, honestly, there's really not. Unless you're looking for a skill prisoner, which is a super rare, which I talked solely on a call free time about. And that card is amazing, or 101. There's really not much for you here. But uh, I just had to get that out of the way. Okay, so my favorite ghost tricks out of the set is Frost, Mary. I don't really care for Cat Girl. I love Mummy. And, um... Skeleton, I'm not big on. I know a lot of people like Skeleton, I just don't really care for him. But um, that's when I was playing around. Mummy is super good. I like just using the one, maybe two copies. I'm not fully sure on my ratios right now when it comes to that. There's been so much going around, <laughs> like doing and stuff, I just haven't had the time to really sit down, you know, work on the deck hardcore like I really wanted to. So it's a beautiful work in progress. But um, Ghost Tricks are just really fun to play. It's that kind of deck that you could just pick up you know, you gotta set your monsters, so it's very challenging, um, I guess, to win against certain decks, but when you when you do win against them, it's amazing, it's a good feeling, and it basically shows, you know, quite a bit of skill in this game, it's still left. Alright, the Sylvans, it's S-Y-L-V-A-N, it's just so I may be pronouncing that wrong, and I don't want no one killing me, just so that's clear there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stop filming just for one second, and we'll pick right back up. Okay, sorry about that, but like I said, film in my house, crazy shit happens. Alright, so these guys are plant monsters, and they're kind of like Light Sworn, but 10 times sackier because they don't really have the consistency of Light Sworn does. And that's kind of not really a word that I would typically use with Light Sworn prior to the new support, but I'm being honest. I don't know if it's because they're plants, I don't know if it's because Konami hates plants. That's my feelings towards that. But honestly, these guys look really cool. I want to build the deck, but every time I do, it doesn't work out, so we'll have to see how that goes. But again, they're a new arch type, so if you pull them, it's great. Burgeons are getting everything they need to be top tier contenders, if you want to use that word, if you want to use the metagame challenge, if you want to use that terminology we use in the MLG, or in like any, any real competitive game that you want to use that. We're gonna we're gonna sit here and say, okay, Bujins are gonna be one of the things, one of the things to beat. If you're looking to beat it, that's gonna be the toughest challenge you're gonna have. Um, Great keepers get a lot of stuff. I feel they're underrated. They're kind of more of an anti-meta deck still. They get a lot of stuff in this, and it actually does push them pretty nicely. 
I haven't fully looked at it, but there'll be pictures of different gravekeepers popping up throughout the video. Um, we get a new princess. It's level eight. It's the use it for the plants. I'm not really big on that one. Doesn't really do much. It, it just seems like Konami just wants to spit them out. We need Lone Fire at three. And that's too risky to do. So obviously, you know, that's going to be an issue. And then we get. Um, I'm on card number forty. If anyone's wondering, if you would like, look, just reading the video, like you know, listening to the video and looking at Yu-Gi-Oh Wiki. Um, Moby is the Mega Monarch. It's a pretty cool concept. Um, honestly, I thought it'd be really cool to use, but there's just better options when it comes to tributing two monsters. I think Mega Kais, if we see Mega Kais, Mega Ryza, those two are going to be the ones. Maybe the Fire one? I don't really know, because how they interpret the effect, it's kind of hard to say. But I feel like it's going in the right direction, and it's nice to see some Monarch support. It really is. Um... We have C101 and 101. 101 is obviously Shark Knight, and it's probably one of my... I may have screwed that name up to hell. I'm not fully sure, because I don't see it here just yet. Alright, so, going back to that now. Alright, so, let me talk about C101 before I end up jumping on that and about 20 other things. It is amazing. You know why it's amazing? Because it does not die. It just keeps coming back like a mother... Okay, I'm, I'm chilling out. I'm chilling out. I'm alright. Um, there's this crazy, like, endless, put half your extra deck on the field, um, combo from the set that allows, you know, from the, it, it's pretty funny, I'm gonna have to eventually show that off. Um, there's also number 39, Utopia Roots, which is not Utopia, it's a, think of a rank one Utopia, I think it's pretty nifty. Basically, Utopia's effect with 500 attack and rank one. But here's the gif of it. When it stops an opponent's monster, if the opponent's monster has a rank, the Utopia gains 500 points equivalent to the rank. So say 1 would be 500, 2 would be 1,000, and so on, and so on. And then if you get to 8, I guess it would be around like 4,000, which is just hilarious. Uh, Felgram will poop on it if anyone's wondering. It's so well. There's a lot of chaos numbers throughout this. I'm not really a number fan. Uh, there's the Ghost Trick Exceed, uh, yeah, <laughs> how am I screwing that up? There's a Ghost Trick Exceed, I'm leaving that in the video, I'm not even correcting myself, because that, that's part of being human, you just, you screw up shit, left and right. Alright, so Ghost Trick, Dull, Dull Hand, I think I said that right? I just, remember, it's midnight, I'm exhausted, I just want to put this video together for you guys. Um, this Ghost Trick halves the attacks of monsters, it's really cool. Um, basically, I want to say Gale, but it also gains like 200 points for every Ghost Trick. Again, I don't have it in front of me, you guys will, so it's kind of a little advantage here, where you can kind of correct me, that's, that's okay. <clears throat> but, um, no, like I said, it's, it's a really cool exceed, and definitely one that Ghost Trick should be running in 2-3. to three. Then we have the Evil Swarm Extinction Knight, I freaking want to rip my hair out every time. I see this thing because it's going to be the Dragon Sack Christ and it's just going to be retarded levels of crap. Um, it's an amazing card. That goes without saying. Rank 4. Stupid level stuff. 1900 attack. Um, I feel like if if you want to get ballsy, you could run Starlight Road again just for shits and giggles. You really can. Um, because, alright, I'm, I'm stuck on this idea of Starlight Road and Huge Revolution. I, I prefer Huge Revolution over it. Um, because then they can't like us to remember it back to the extra deck. They drop that against you. You have big freaking committed field. And you have that, you know, you have the huge revolution face down at least two monsters. Well, at least two cards. Obviously, you're going to have the two cards. And, um, like I said, huge revolution can still be a dead draw, so I wouldn't really advise it. But you want to be a troll. It's the greatest move you can ever do. And a friend do it to me. And I just fell on the floor. I was like, I have to talk about it. My subscribers will love this. My freaking, the people I talk to will love this stuff, man. I love this. But um, basically, because it destroys the whole board, it Starlight Road, Free Stardust, or Huge Revolution, Free Banish. And just, it's a priceless thing. But uh, moving on, it, don't get me wrong, it's, it's going to be the money card of the entire set, without question, it's a money card. Downward Magician, um, rank 4, you can put it on a rank 1. If you put it on the rank 1, it's sacky, it's like Gaia, it gains more power, I love it, it's dirty, but it can only be done in the main phase too. Alright, jumping right back into it, because I like making little cuts like that, because stuff happens, and obviously, when you have a household, and you're a dad, you gotta do these things, but, um, going back to it, 
All right, I think we were at Downward Magician. Okay, there's Leo, Guardian of the Forest, if I'm not mistaken. It's a level 10 version of Star Eater. Not nearly as good because they can warning it, bombless it, compulse it. Well, I guess you can compulse Star Eater, but not. Well, you get what I'm saying. But um, this thing, basically, when it attacks, it's going to freeze everything on the board until the end of the battle. And I think that's pretty freaking cool, and it's still nice to see a generic level 10 synchro. We have a generic 9, generic 10, we have many generic 8 and under. You know, it's it's nice to see Konami give us something that's... I don't want to say it's broken, or poop, or bad. I want to say it's good. And that that's my standpoint on it. It's good, I like it, I'm happy with it. You know, we don't need thousands of broken things, but um, obviously for sets to sell, we do. There's two, there's a Rank Up Magic Force, another one, the Astral Force, and there's a Rank Down. The Rank Down basically says Utopia goes down to Rank 1. Um, <clears throat> Zexal fans will recognize it pretty much. There's a new Bujin Resurrection card. There's Ghost Trick Mansion. I don't really care for Ghost Trick Mansion, but... Um, it allows for another it allows for another build. Then we have Share Ride, which is basically another version of Maxi, but not nearly as good because it's only when your opponent searches, if I'm not mistaken, because it's been a while and card never worked out in testing. It seems like a great idea, but it never worked out and well it's the continuation of mistake, I guess. You know, like artwork wise. We're not talking card wise. Don't 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 even know. Um more more silly and stuff. Ghost Trick Roll Shift, great card for the deck, definitely love it. Um, if you're building Ghost Tricks, definitely pick some up. <clears throat> I don't know, like, when it, a lot of people say to run three, to me it comes down to preference, at least run one, just again, preference. Um, there's Will the Monarchs, I don't know too much about that, but to me that screams more of the Ghost Trick variant of Monarchs, so it looks like we'll have a new version of that coming out soon. And then we get to Skill Prisoner. I've talked about this card before. This is one that you definitely want to pay attention to because if 101's giving you a lot of problems with sucking up your monsters, this will poop on it. It will poop on effect value, it will poop on a lot of things. And I like saying that you get two uses out of it, not one, so it's like breakthrough skill, but better. And yes, I actually went there. Um, the last two cards from the Japanese set are 7980. Um, there's a Dustin card, and the other one's a Promise of an Adversary. 81, 82, 83, 84, 85 of the OCG sets, which is the Chromaly Nebula, the number 36, I believe that's the Chaos one, the Heraldic Exceed, the number 18, and Heraldic, it starts with an A and then a U or G, and the N T A T I O N, basically, just so you guys can actually spell it out, you can go back and slow it down, <clears throat> are not coming over to the TCG at this time. That's only the OCG exclusives. Yes, they received their own exclusives, just so that's clear. Now remember, we still have 10 OCG imports and 10 TCG exclusives. We don't know the full 10 TCG exclusives, but we do know the stuff we're getting. Whoa, 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 we got names for all of them, I'm sorry. We know nine of them. Oh no, we know all 10, but there's one we don't know on. And I'm on the Yu-Gi-Oh! Wikia site right now. And this is coming from Pojo and from the spoilers, so I don't want to hear fake and sh no. The sneak peek card is a Sylveon Miko range. It's kind of hard, like, you know, to read it this late at night. There'll be a picture in front of you with the effect. You can read it there. And um, if you have any questions on any of the effects, or I'm just using Japanese images, please don't be afraid to ask in the comments. I will write out the whole thing for you. No questions asked. Um, Ghost Trick Yeti, I saw this before. Basically, it's a Book of Moon on your own Ghost Tricks. I think it is. It's 2,000 defense. Yugi Final 4 liked it somewhat. I think it's poop. Avoid it. It's a common, but avoid it. Um, Bujin Pavo. I'm probably saying that wrong because I see the GI after the Bujin part. So Bujin Pavo. I'm probably saying that wrong again. Um, but the point is, this thing makes you mono. Oh, you kill my you mono by battle? Okay, bring it back. Done. Come back and do it all over again. I, I, like, I'm not, I don't hate on Meditex, but, um, uh, that was good freaking support. Um, Gravekeepers get a monster called Heretic. Alright, we were on Gravekeepers Heretic. 
Brad, it should be Heretic because I don't see an A there. But, um, yeah, the camera died. So, Gravekeeper's Heretic under Necro Valley gets a 500 boost. That's a 2300 attacker. It's unaffected by other cards. I believe that's the effect. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, basically, it's like an Armadades, Pursuto Armadades, which means false, fake. Um, dictionary wise, look it up, not that hard to find. Um, I do feel it's pretty good if you can get Necro Valley out fast enough. Then there's the Noble Knight Perdur and the Queen of the Noble Knights. Both are not really what people are expecting, but they're really good cards. And a lot of people, oh, but, but Ryu, it's not what we were hoping for. But th just stay with me real quick here. The Queen to me is something that's really good mid to late game because obviously it gives you something to equip. And it allows you basically to stall a little bit. And then like if you have Storm, you can play Storm, kill the Queen, kill the back row. So I feel like it's it's something. And I am gonna I know someone mentioned about Insectors plus Storm, I'm looking into it. How's that sound? Um, there's a card called Power Insectotron. Sounds like something out of Transformers. Um, we don't have a photo or anything, we just have the name, it was translated from Spanish. So if it's really busted, I'll just put out a separate total video for it, so you guys will be in the loop. Um, this, yeah, I say um a lot because I'm just massively tired, and I want to like just take my recording headset, throw it out the window, I'm ordering a new one in the morning. Um, yes, I actually said that. <clears throat> okay, card 88 is called Obedience Schooled. And basically what this thing does is allows you to bring out three level two or lower beast types. I may be a little bit incorrect on what I'm saying here, but I should be right. There'll be a photo. Um, I'm going to like edit it so you'll see it. But um, this allows for Tanukits to have an OTK. Just straight out of nowhere, like a whole one turn OTK. You want to dedicate the deck to it. I'm working on the video for that immediately. But um, I feel there's, there's going to be more than just Tanukids. It benefits Fables. And that's a deck I, honest to God, love. But I miss because of the fact that Bridal Knack's gone. You can't really go further without Bridal Knack. Not sound that way. We're, it's some kind of discard outlet that constantly allows you to do it. Fable Raven does not cut it. That's the problem. <clears throat> but this card gives me a lot of hopes for Tanukids. So if you're a Tanukid player... Or you just wanted to play two new kids, this card is amazing for them. And my phone's going a little wacky on, like, you know, when you turn your phone, you, you get the spectral thing? Yeah, it's being a pain in the butt, so you got to stay with me while I talk about uh, being in school. But, um, no, I feel it's going to be an extremely good card for Beast decks. It's something the deck really did need. It basically allows you to bring them from the deck, and that's going to allow you to set up really quickly and allows you to abuse quite a few things. And, um, quite honestly, the only, the only downside to this is that you can only summon beast types for the turn. There is also a card called the First Monarch. I don't believe we have the effect. If we do, there'll be the photo, and then you guys can read that off. You can, like, pause it, read it. You get interactive with the video. That's what I like to do. All right, the last nine, ten cards are Dark Artist. I remember this thing because I played OCG when it first, like when the game first first came out. I was in Okinawa and I just went over to Tokyo and I was able to play the game. It was an amazing time. But um, Dark Artist is like 50 years old at this rate and it's just in here to be in here. So is Swordsman from a Distant Land, I believe that's the full name. There's Queen's, uh, Queen Angel of the Roses, it's a pretty nice card. Rose Witch, I'm not really big on Rose Witch because basically Rose Witch is just one of those monsters that says, Hey, you can tri if you're tributing a plant that needs two tributes, just, just get rid of me. I mean, I could probably build a deck around it for fun, but yeah. Snapdragon, I, I absolutely just don't like Snapdragon because all it does is just banish the card. You get to see it. There's really not too much of a benefit there. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't know. And then there's this one card I cannot pronunciate, so I had to actually open it. It is called Alpaca, the Holy Beast of the Forest, and I was able to actually pronounce it. It has 2700, 2700 attack, 2100 defense. This card gains the following effect during by its battle phase. If it's an attack, insect, plant, wing beast type monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. That's pretty nifty. Defense, plant, wing beast, monsters you control. Yeah, insect, plant, wing beast, monsters you control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. 
So that's pretty nifty. It's a level 7. Um, it's a beast. I feel like if you want to take it into Nukits, that's something you could do, but remember that Redox is at 1, so you're not really going to get away with that special summoning unless you find some way to dump it in, in the graveyard and just call the Haunted it back. It's not that hard to do, but yeah, you're going to be a little dependent on a few cards. And I always hate like being dependent on a few cards, but with all the new stuff for the for the Tanukits, I mean, it it's easily something you could do. Mighty Warrior and Dodo -Do Buster are in here. The other inner turret, I can't even pronounce this, it's almost one in the morning. Inner planetary purple thorny dragon, it's like the the next version of it, it's in here. There'll be a photo. And star, uh, Starship Spy Plane, which has a really cool name. It, to me, I'm, I'm kind of old when I say this, or maybe I just watched too many movies with my grandfather. <clears throat> It reminds me of the 007 movies from the name, just from the name. It's nice to see a new spaceship. This one, basically, it, yeah. If your opponent controls a face-up exceed, you can special summon this card from your hand. When this card is special from the hand, target one spell or track card your opponent controls return to the hand. <clears throat> so it's a Cyber Dragon, in that sense, not too, too great, but not, not really bad. Now, I have a few last things to say. One is thank you for anyone who set through the whole thing. And watched it. I really do appreciate you know the time you spent to do that. As of right now, from what I saw from the channel, we are ten away from eighteen hundred. That is a accomplishment in its own right. And I just want to say thank you to every one of you, one thousand seven hundred ninety who have done just gone and subscribed. I appreciate it so much. As well as Time Wizard and uh, the Time Wizard, Miss Valley Master, and Yugi Phone Four. Mr. Blue Dude and Omega all being part of the council as well as our, as our extended members Geo and Elvis and Mikey and Greg and Johnny Yeah, we could be here all day. There's there's a whole cast and crew, but whatever. What I'm trying to say is I Know I wanted to be a little faster in the videos. I kind of slowed them down. You'll be in the loop soon and The two monster computers will be built soon. And yes, I actually said two because of where I'm heading to so I need one with me and one, one just here to be here and be done. But um, it's been it's been the hell of a ride for uh, the first part of the council's life cycle, and it's going to be a long, long life cycle. And we have very, very many things planned out. But um, that's part of the reason why we just took a little time off from uploading. I apologize for that. And I know on the one year anniversary, I was like, "Yeah, we're going to do videos that every day," and it didn't happen. Ryu got very, very, very busy with tons of poop on him. They, you get what I'm saying, like tons of just stuff to do. And um, like if you were reading my Facebook post, you obviously know that I'm going to be a dad again. So, you know, it's, it was a lot of like preparing and, you know, saying, okay, we have to change a few things around now. But I, I'm going too much into it. And I said I wasn't going to. apologize for that. But, um... The set previews and reviews, like we normally typically would do, that became this video, will be back to its normal self for the next set. That's pretty much not a guarantee, that's what we're trying to do. Card versus card will return when the new monster computer's up because there was so much I want to do with that, but I can't do it because I have to shorten it, and I hate shortening videos because it takes forever to process and then upload them. It, that's all being worked on in the, behind the scenes and all that. There's a lot of great things coming up this year, and there's a lot of crazy stuff for 2015. And I'm just super excited to share it all with you, and I hope you stay around. And if you're new to the channel and you really enjoyed this video, and you enjoyed how like informative I am when it comes to actually not just the content on Legacy of the Valiants, but on bringing some of the future to the council and hinting around about it. If you really do enjoy that, please stay for the ride by hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, just take a second, hit the like button. I hate axing that. I feel kind of dirty when I do, but I appreciate it if you do. And if you have something to ax or a deck request or just anything, please leave a comment below. We get super like talkative. We want to talk to you guys. And if you really want to get super talkative and hang out with us kind of thing, hit us out on Facebook because soon, just soon, we'll be streaming. But that's it for now. I'm ready for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Council. I'm out of here. Good night, good day, whatever. Peace. I'll see you next video.